Some reptiles are really cool, but you can't have them. Some reptiles are illegal in counties or countries or regions or all over the world. And today, we're going to talk about the top five illegal reptiles that you could probably shouldn't keep. I'm Adam. This is Pikachu. You're watching Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles. Stick around. Hots. I know that we usually do a little bit of an intro first, but let's just get right into it. Uh, hots. Uh, venomous reptiles are number five. It's not uh, per se a specific reptile, but it is a group of reptiles. And in a lot of places, you can't have them. I went a little bit country to country and state to state to find the most illegal reptiles. And what came up over and over is not a specific reptile, but a group, venomous reptiles. And this goes for snakes, even rear fang venomous reptiles, and for lizards as well. In at least 20 states in the United States, they are illegal in at least part of that state or require a license or a permit in order to get one. What's really interesting and I didn't know until I did some research on it today, in a lot of states, Tennessee being one of them, you can keep venomous reptiles if they're native to that area. In certain places in that state, you'd need a permit. I don't know about other states, but that's the one that kept coming up. Uh, it's really interesting to me because you can keep something like, uh, if a copperhead is native to your area, you can keep one, but you can't keep a bush viper. I guess maybe the reason is there's no anti-venom uh, that's available to you for certain types, like a lapids, for example. No lapids live in Tennessee or the southern U.S. at all, as a matter of fact. And also, let's suppose that you had a big bunch of bush vipers and then someone let them go or they got out. Well, all of a sudden now you've got an invasive species that is venomous, which you don't have anti-venom for. So I'm just kind of spitballing. I don't know if that's exactly why they're illegal, but the video is just about stuff that is illegal and venomous snakes and venomous lizards are part of that category for sure. They're number five on the list because it is so broad and let's just narrow it down a little bit and get on to number four. Number four isn't even a reptile. This is the only one in the list that isn't a specific reptile or group. We're going to talk about Hawaii because to me this is the most interesting. I remember when I was a kid, the only vacation I ever took when I was a kid uh, started in Hawaii. Very cool, but what I learned and because I was interested in reptiles even when I was 13 uh, there's really no native snakes, like very few native reptiles at all in the entire state of Hawaii. And I guess it makes sense. It's a volcanic island, right? So it's not like it drifted away from somewhere and carried on that, you know, a bunch of life. And it's so far away. We're talking about a three hour plane ride from Los Angeles. So it's not like it's a hop, skip and a jump. I mean, unless you're a sea snake or even then, like I, I'm not exactly sure what kind of range sea snakes have in Hawaii, but I do know that there's no like pythons there, there's no boas there, not natively anyway, and they want to keep it that way because they don't have any predators. So let's suppose that, you know, a Hurricane Andrew happens again, like happened in Florida, uh, spoiler alert, that's coming up, uh, and they it's all of a sudden you get a whole bunch of pythons that are in Hawaii that are eating, you know, the Axis deer or whatever else that's there that, you know, bring in a bunch of money for hunters, they get wiped out because these pythons will breed and breed and breed. It's the perfect place for, you know, like a Burmese python or something like that. And, uh, or a crocodile, for example, that's another great example. And they have no natural predators. So what are you going to do? You can't really eradicate them. Best of luck. We see what's going on in Florida. That's not really going out over that well, right? So uh, Hawaii doesn't really allow you to have anything. And we're talking about even bearded dragons, like something that probably wouldn't even thrive in Hawaii. You'd probably get a respiratory infection because of the humidity. But there's really nothing that's allowed uh, that isn't native there. And there's really not a lot of native species of reptiles there and no native species of snakes as far as I know. So Hawaii is, is number four. I mean, did you know that? Put that in the comment section below. Is there another place like that as well? All right, I wanna get a little bit more in depth now with number three, which is a group constrictor snakes. And this isn't everywhere, obviously. I mean, I just had Pikachu, which by the way, don't put rats in a bucket and then bring your ball python out because then he starts striking and thinks you're, anyway. So I'm allowed to have ball pythons and boa constrictors. I can have pretty much anything I want where I live. But if you go in the next town over, uh, you can't keep anything over three feet. So it depends on your area. So this is very specific, but great example. We kind of alluded to it at uh, number four, constrictor species like Burmese pythons, uh, African rock pythons, scrub pythons, uh, reticulated pythons, uh, you can't keep them in Florida. 
period. Burmese pythons, you may go to jail or a maximum fine of a half a million dollars if you're caught keeping a Burmese python without a license or a permit or whatever you call it there which is fascinating to me and it makes sense. And for those of you who don't know, in this year up here, because I can't remember off the top of my brain here, uh, there was a hurricane, Hurricane Andrew, I believe, and I'll correct it up here if I'm wrong, that blew through Southern Florida and a big research facility with a bunch of Burmese pythons got kind of destroyed. And then all of a sudden, a bunch of Burmese pythons are out in the Everglades where they're gonna thrive and they've got really no natural predators except for crocodiles or alligators, I should say, which they do eat also, by the way. Uh, and it's so vast that really, I mean, what do you, <laughs> how are you going to catch all these Burmese pythons, especially, and that was in 1993, I think, or whatever year it is right here. So there's no way that you're going to control this species, which is out of control. I mean, have you ever seen the Everglades? No, not a chance. So now you've got this rampant population of not only Burmese pythons, but other pythons as well. And things like tagus, which don't even come from Florida or anywhere near Florida, really. They're, they're, you know, that's another thing too. Anything that's not uh, native and comes and becomes an invasive species is really going to destroy the entire ecosystem. But Adam, stay on track. We're talking about constrictor species. And there's other places as well where you can't keep them. I had a comment on the video about ball pythons last week, which you can watch right here or on Monday of this week. Uh, and this person was from part of Canada. They were from, I think it was Saskatchewan, where the, you can't keep ball pythons at all, which doesn't really make sense. A ball python has never killed a person in the history of Everdom that I know. And also, it's freaking Saskatchewan. Do you know what the weather is like in Saskatchewan right now? Cold, really cold. A ball python will die in sometime between October and November, 100%. So they're never going to be able to have a native species or a native popula population there. So I don't know why. But there's a ton, a ton, a ton of places where you cannot keep boa constrictors or pythons or really anything that's a big constrictor type of snake. Uh, it's not just the Everglades and parts of California and Texas. It's a bunch of other places as well. And the reasons aren't just because they might come and destroy all the wildlife and eat your cat and eat your dog and, you know, stuff like that. It's just because I actually don't know why. It's just some places you can't have them. And Burmese pythons were actually banned from importation in the United States in 2012, so I've got no idea how Bob Clark is getting all those cool ones in, but I'm sure it's legal. So the point of number three, if you live in Florida or somewhere else, but Florida for this example, don't keep a boa constrictor or a Burmese python because you might go to jail for seven years or owe half a million dollars in fines. If you're from Florida and this is just some like propaganda I read on Wikipedia and a bunch of other websites, including your government website, put that in the comments section. That'd be fun to read. And number two, something that I've got a personal love for and I've got in my collection because my region doesn't care what you keep apparently, hognose snakes. And mostly this is westerns or easterns depending on the part of the country that you're in. But uh, there's at least 12 states that I know of that have an all out ban on selling them. Uh, or you need a permit to keep them, usually a research permit or things like that, which by the way, for number three, in some places you can, if it's, you're not allowed to have a python, you can get a you know, research permit. Most of these animals you can get permits for. Hognose snakes, even though they only get to like three feet if they're big ones, and if they bite you, I mean, you might get a swelling in your hand if you're allergic or probably nothing. They're banned, which I don't know why. It doesn't really make too much sense. I guess in some places, like even where I live here, there's certain types of garter snakes that we're not allowed to keep because they're native species. And I guess that makes sense. I mean, you, you can't take anything from the wild and have it in your you know, collection, uh, there's, that'd be a great way to know right off the bat if someone's doing something illegal. Uh, there's certain turtles here as well that are endangered and things like that. But with hognose snakes, I think the best example was uh, Missouri. Missouri, you need a permit to keep hognose snakes. And Kansas, you are allowed to have hognose snakes, but you can't sell them. So I imagine that you're allowed to cross state lines, which is kind of interesting. It just means that what? You're not going to pay taxes to Kansas when you buy a pogno steak. Like I, I don't get it. I don't know why. Um, and there's other places too, like Saskatchewan is another place where you're not allowed to keep them. But Western hogno snakes are endemic to Saskatchewan. So, I mean, the no fun police have really gone through the reptile community there. No pythons and uh, definitely no hogno snakes, which makes sense because you find them there. So I can understand that. But as far as invasive species, I don't know of anywhere that's barring you from keeping them for that reason. 
But I mean, hog nose snakes, as harmless and as cute with their little tiny shovel faces as they are, you cannot keep in a bunch of different places. I mean, I would go through all the list uh, of states, but I don't want to bore you, and also my memory's not good enough to remember them all, but Colorado is another one. I know someone from Colorado who, you know, they comment on all the, all the videos about hognose snakes, and usually with a sad face because they can't keep them. Sorry, dude. Now, before we get on to number one, we're going to go through some honorable mentions, just two, really. I mean, one is... Australia, which is kind of like Hawaii, but it's not so much like you're not allowed to keep stuff there. There is some stuff that you're not allowed to keep there. I thought he pooped on me, but she didn't. Uh, there's certain things like uh, export. So I think it was 1976. If not, I'm so dumb. It'll be up here. You're not allowed to export anything from Australia, which means that any of the really cool morphs of like blackhead pythons or spotted pythons or uh, blue tongue skinks we don't really have here in North America or you know if you're from the UK same thing same problem right so I don't know it kind of kind of sucks but uh, you also can't keep a lot of things there because they may become invasive and you're not going to have any predation uh, to control the population. Something that's really funny is one of the main things with Australia one of their main things that is invasive that they're trying to get rid of is house cats which is so messed up because if you're not from Australia and you pick up a hunting magazine from there, people will literally hold up like, I, it, this is a family friendly show, on to the next honorable mention. And endangered species uh, or species that need CITES to bring in to yeah, different countries or regions or areas. I mean, uh, I could do a whole video about that, so we're not going to do that. And obviously, like critically endangered species, there's a lot that you can't export from that country. And uh, if they're here and you can breed them, then I mean, it, that's just uh, so we're not talking about critically endangered species. But we're going to talk about number one, which is crocodilians. And <laughs> crocodilians are really cool. I, I mean, I love them. I, if you watch my dream reptiles video right here, you'll notice that, you know, very high on the list where a very rare type of crocodilian is on that list. I just think they're amazing. I mean, my favorite show growing up was Steve Irwin's Crocodile Hunter. I mean, that is what I grew up doing. Watching shows about animals and crocodiles were the biggest, most dinosaur looking things. And after I graduated from Land Before Time, crocodiles were what had me fascinated because that's the closest thing that you can get to a Petri or a Ducky or a Littlefoot, right? Actually, it's funny because her daughter's name is Littlefoot and she's in most of the videos. There are certain countries where crocodiles are outright completely illegal. No permit. I mean, unless you work for a big facility where you have to go through tons and tons of paperwork, but for private collections, no permits, no licenses, no nothing. You can't have one, period. That's it. And that makes sense because if you think about places like Florida, again, which is kind of like America's basement, it seems like. It's like full of bugs and spiders and creepy stuff and it's damp and it's moist. And then even places like here in Canada where there's nowhere really where a crocodile could live. I mean, maybe in Vancouver, uh, if they could outdo the winter somehow, which is still, you know, kind of warm, but long and too cold for a crocodile most likely. But, you know, an alligator or a crocodile is not gonna live here and survive outside, right? But it's more of a public safety thing, I think, more than anything else. So there are certain regions in Canada where you don't need a license to keep a crocodile. I wouldn't do it. And even if you can keep something and you don't need a permit for it, places that let you keep crocodilians a lot of the times will you know, make it very well known that you are liable for anything that happens. And some places will even make you get insurance, insurance for your crocodilians. So, I mean, at the end of the day, who do you know? I mean, if you wanted to keep something like a salty, who do you know has a pen big enough with all the fixins to do that? Probably no one. Not a great idea. I mean, there's really like, there's dwarf caimans and there are these small crocodilians that you could keep that are more, you know, realistic. But I'm not here to tell you what you should or shouldn't keep. I'm just telling you, you know, get a permit or I don't think you can watch these videos in jail. So hit subscribe while you can, please. Right there. And lastly about crocodilians, a lot of states or counties anyway in the south of the US will you know, come and inspect to make sure that you have the right type of environment and caging, which here in Ontario, oddly enough, in some places, if you keep big cats, which you're allowed to keep in certain you know, regions, we call them here in uh, Canada and Ontario, will come and inspect to make sure that you have the right facility, which is hilarious to me because like maybe you just if you're a regular person you shouldn't own a tiger like who are you mike tyson so there you go the top five like mainly groups and states and sometimes one time a reptile in particular illegal ones that you cannot keep unless you have cites or live in parts of the world that don't care about your 
health and safety most likely, but either way, did I forget something? Did I say something that was incorrect? Throw that in the comment section below. And as always, someone asked for this video, which is why I made it. So if you've got something in your head that you'd like to see on a video on this channel, put it in the comment section below. Everything comes from there. And because I do videos twice a week, that means that I'll see you on Monday.